A new Hover Air? Yep. Here we'll take a look at the new version of the Hover Air X1, the Hover Air X1 Smart. Let's take a look at what's different from the original version. Hi, Todd from Blue Marble Videos here, and what I've got here is the Hover Air X1 Smart, which is a new limited release version of the Hover Air X1 flying camera. I'm not going to bore you with a full unboxing video, but I did find this kind of neat. <laughs> Check this out. Watch there. And real quick, here's what's in the box. What I found real interesting when I unpacked this is that literally all of the documentation that came with it is strictly in Japanese. No other languages at all and no English. As my Japanese is uh, rather rusty, I have no idea what any of this says, but the pictorial instructions make most of it pretty obvious, which essentially is download the app. And the information in the app for your phone once you install this was in English once I saw it to the correct language so I had no problem getting everything up and running. When I first turned on and synced the drone to the app all of the audio messages from the drone were also in Japanese so I had no idea what it was saying to me though I assumed it was telling me to sync it up with the app. I had no issues at all getting it all set up, synced and activated quickly and then did find in the settings where I could change the drone audio language to English and now can understand what it's telling me with no problems at all. So, what are these Hover Air X1s? If you don't know, they're drones that work without a controller and are designed mainly for doing automated video shots of the person flying it. It has several modes, including hover, zoom, follow mode, orbit, dolly mode, and a, a few others. To take off, in all of the modes, once selecting the mode that you want with a small button, you simply short press the power button, place the drone facing you laying on your palm, and the drone will beep a few times, then lift off and begin the selected maneuver while filming. Real quick, here's what all of these modes do, with examples of each. Hover simply takes off and hovers in front of you while filming, with the drone and gimbal following you as you move around. The drone itself doesn't record audio, but the app on your phone does, so you can record yourself talking if you like and use the software to sync up the video from the drone and the audio from your phone for audio video shots. In all of these modes, once shooting is complete, you simply hold out your hand and the drone will land on it. Zoom out mode simply has the drone take a shot of you while zooming out and up, which is really nice for establishing shots. In follow mode, probably the most useful mode for this little flying camera, the drone will follow behind you while recording. 
it manages to keep up quite well, even at higher speeds, such as here, where it's following me on my electric scooter. This drone doesn't have any kind of obstacle avoidance, but, as you can see here in these shots, following behind me, it did a great job managing to move through the trees and branches while I was hiking, without hitting anything. Orbit mode has the drone do a full 360 orbit around you while filming, as you can see here. Bird's eye mode is where the drone will fly straight up away from you while filming, as you can see in this shot right here. Finally, custom mode allows you to choose a number of other options that you can set in the app, including this one, which is probably my favorite, where it follows you from the side. You have to be careful with this one, since without obstacle avoidance, it's easy for the drone to crash into something if you're not paying attention to its flight path. Many of these custom modes are only available after you've flown the drone for a certain number of flights in order to unlock them. You'll see a countdown for number of flights required to unlock various custom modes in the app itself. In every one of these flight modes, you can set various parameters such as distance, height, etc. right from the app itself before flying. Now, let's take a look at what's similar in the X1 Smart as compared with the, with the original X1 and what's different. The original Hover Air X1 is a small and very light drone. It's only 125 grams and the dimensions are 5 inches by 3.4 by 1, or in millimeters that's 127 by 145 by 30. The limited release Hover Air X1 Smart is even smaller and lighter yet. This tiny little thing is just a hair under 100 grams at 99 grams. That's including battery. And it's 4.375 inches by 5.625 by 1.06 inches, which works out in millimeters to 101 by 142 by 27. It was designed for the even stricter drone regulations in the Japanese market and was sold only there until this limited release where it was available every, everywhere for a period of time. As you can see, it's still available on the Japan version of the Hover Air website. This limited release appears to be over now, but I wouldn't be surprised if they released it more broadly once again if this limited release was successful so keep your eyes open if you're interested in this little drone after you see the rest of this video and what's different with the older one. So what do you sacrifice for this smaller stature? Now, full disclosure, I do not own the original Hover Air X1. So my comparison in terms of functionality is based on what I learned through various means and of course my direct use with the Hover Air X1 Smart. So as far as I can tell, what you lose is Nothing. Nothing. It has all the same flight modes, same camera, same gesture controls, and same functionality all around. Okay, now despite me saying nothing a second ago, there is one thing. Unlike the Hover Air X1, which folds up to become even more portable for storage, the Hover Air X1 Smart does not fold up. However, it's so small, I'm not sure that's a big deal. As you can see here, I can easily slip this in my pocket. And I did have my phone in that pocket as well, and did indeed do some hiking with it in my pocket and didn't find it a problem at all. Because it's smaller and even lighter, I suspect it will be a little more susceptible to wind. It was struggling a bit with the breeze on the day I did my testing, and you can see that in some of the shots here.
The battery life of the original Hover Air X1 is 11 minutes according to the Hover Air manual. As usual, this means a bit less in practice. Most folks got around 8 minutes out of their batteries. Here, I tested my Hover Air X1 Smart in hover mode and timed it. The smaller drone with a smaller lighter battery lasted right around the same length of time. After hovering, and waiting, and hovering, and waiting, and hovering, and waiting, it finally landed at the 8 minute and 36 second mark. Not bad at all. And with the combo kit coming with three batteries and a charger, that gives you a decent amount of time to get some shots in. The batteries charge quite quickly too. So if you have a power bank such as this one, this one is uh, obviously a battery and solar powered, then that'll even give you more shots. This is a great little flying camera and a lot of fun to use. It's primarily useful for family videos and B-roll footage, which is likely the two things I'll mostly be using it for. Just to be clear, this video is not sponsored in any way by Hover Air or anyone else. I bought this with my own money, and these thoughts and opinions are mine and mine alone. Keep an eye out for the next limited release of the Hover Air X1 Smart. If you think you'd prefer this smaller, lighter version of the Hover Air X1, or get someone in Japan to buy one for you and ship it to you. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful and helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could return the favor and help me out by clicking those buttons down there. As always, happy flying, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.